Assalamu alaikum. Peace to the gods, peace to the earths, and all of the righteous families of the planet. It's your big brother Fahim, aka Day Son of Law, back once again with another presentation for the family. Um, as I promised today, I want to jump back off into the lessons. You know, as I mentioned all the time, this is a teacher student channel. So this is what we mostly focus on at the end of the day. Just to my newborns real quick, and uh, you know, some of the students, new students, who are uh, interested in this 5% nation, and you wanna learn more of the teachings of the 5%ers, you know, of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Father Allah, you know, um, definitely, man, you know, you got to get on your studies. That's that's first and foremost, you know. But definitely stay tuned to this channel because we will be giving some more, you know, uh, just insight, if you will, on the teachings of the 5% Nation and, you know, what we teach, what we require from our students. One of the first things, and my students, they already know where I'm going with this, so I know they probably like, you know, but... For all listening, I just want to real quickly before I jump off into it, it is very important and I can't stress this enough. You have to be an avid reader. You have to read. You have to. This is important. The average 5% of out there today does not read. Actual fact, they don't read. I don't know why, but this nation was founded upon reading. Always. The five percenters that, that, that I grew up around and that I knew that once existed were five percenters that even stuff that brothers in the nation of Islam might have been, as Minister Farrakhan says, intellectual cowards. It may not want to touch on certain things. or The, the five percenters, we, we, we deal with it all. We'll get it and make a plus degree and, and build on it thoroughly. You have to read. My students already know when they get their supreme mathematics or after they get their supreme mathematics and their supreme alphabet, after that in their 12 jewels of Islam, after that, you got to start reading, bro. Sis, you got to start reading. Something is required of you and I'm not talking about your money. You know, because I can make my own money. Allah already promised me that. He promised us in this nation that, you know, we would have money and homes and friendships and all walks of life. And, you know, I can acquire this or I can attain this on my own. What I require from you is when you get your student enrollment, when you're now being enrolled as a student in this knowledge or in this nation, yo, you got to read message to the black man. I don't want to just hear you come back and quote the one to ten. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, good. He's an excellent quoter. <laughs> nah, we don't do that. We don't do that. Because as we know, knowledge is not enough. Knowledge is the foundation upon which all things exist. But at the end of the day, your wisdom comes through reading and application. Being able to apply what you say you know. See, you could say you God, but if I don't see you out there doing no godly stuff, you ain't no God to me. I just see you and be like, yo, what's up, brother? You know, what up, homeboy? What up, fam? And if you ignorant, yo, what up, nigga? I'm going to call you what, you what you act. You are not what you tell people you are. You are what people see you doing. Very important. So let us act like righteous gods. Let us act like righteous individuals. Very, very important. Reading is fundamental. It's not a coincidence or it's not by happenstance that the white man didn't allow our people to read for over 300 years. This is not something that just, oh, you know, no. There was thought. In, into that, the Caucasian man, the white man knew reading automatically 
is, is a fundamental practice that every human being is required to do. As every human being requires exercise daily, every human being requires reading daily, something, some sort of material. But at the end of the day, as five percenters, we read what is uh, 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 mathematically important to us. We read stuff that can help us in our day-to-day -day lives. And then we apply that, whether it be through our supreme mathematics and giving you today's mathematics or giving you today's, you know, degree or whatever, whatever the case may be. Very important. Reading is fundamental. You know, very fundamental. You know, Allah, that's not the, you know, he told uh, uh, man, read. When he found man in the cave of ignorance, read. That was his first words. Master Ford Muhammad, when he met the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, read. He gave him a Holy Quran first in Arabic and said, read this. The messenger couldn't read the original language of Arabic, so he gave him an English Quran and said, read. And then after giving the messenger his first term examination, Master Ford Muhammad still sent him on a mission to go read. Do research. Here's a list of 104 books. I want you to go seek out, find, study, and read. Not just commit to memory, but read them and learn them. Very, very important. You know, as I mentioned the other day, the average five percenters, and I mostly see this among my brothers in the nation of gods and earths. And as I said the other day, I would go so far as to say 60% of you brothers have not read the messenger's books. You parade around with his lessons, but you have not read his books. You've not read Message to the Black Man, Our Savior has arrived, Fall of America, Theology of Time, How to Eat to Live, Book 1 and 2. You haven't read any of these. Table Talks with Muhammad. This is like our hadiths. In the nation of Islam. You know, table talks with Muhammad. You know, a host of videos and lectures that the messenger gave and left us with. In the Muhammad Speaks newspaper, every week the messenger would have articles in there. Science breaking stuff down in his lessons. Not no just abstract information. No, stuff that he have already he's already taught us. But now he's given us more deeper meaning and understanding to it. So this is the reason why the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad can stand up now after 35, 40 years of studying these teachings and say, this day Allah has made me equal in knowledge with him. Here goes your knowledge and your wisdom now intertwined. See, knowledge and wisdom is really the same thing. Master Ford Muhammad represents the knowledge, and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad represents the wisdom. But now we see the two married together in holy matrimony. This day, Allah has made me equal in knowledge with Him and has given me power over the winds and the seas, and the sun, the moon, the stars. And I've, I've waited over 379 years for this day. The messenger can now stand up as a God in the wilderness of North America and make that proclamation. And then born it, show and prove that Allah raised him up and stood him on a living perpendicular. So to my newborns, your enlighteners should be giving you reading material. When you get your student enrollment and now you're being enrolled as a student, you should be reading message to the black man. When you get your 1 to 10, I'm, I'm sorry, when you get your 1 to 36, you should be reading Fall of America. When you get your lost found Muslim lesson number one or the one to 14, you should be reading Our Savior Has Arrived. When you get your one to 40, you should be reading Theology of Time Lecture ser Series and all other articles and stuff that the messenger put out there. See, Brother Clarence 13 next, he wasn't among us that long. The father wasn't among us that long. He was only among us for a short period. However, we do know, we do know it is an actual fact that he did not part ways with the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in terms of understanding. 
he had the same, he drawed up the same understanding as the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad with these lessons. Same understanding. Let no man fool you and tell you, no, the Father saw it a different way. No, he didn't. And this is the reason why the same exact lessons that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us, that he answered those questions and answers and gave us, and even though they were answered very near correct, he gave it, he gave us that same uh, those same things along with the supreme mathematics and the supreme alphabet, which is really the same thing. Is the father didn't give us the problem book instead of our problem book? Our problem book is dealing with all mathematics. That was given to us by Master Fard Muhammad, who we say is a law god in person. So the father saw it fit to give us supreme mathematics and the supreme alphabet. The supreme mathematics and the supreme alphabet, if you read the problem book, it is it's like the same thing. It's the same thing. Of course, it's the father's own self-style wisdom now being inculcated to us, but it's still what the messenger said. Mathematics is Islam and Islam is mathematics. All things can be proven in no limit of time. Actual fact. So my newborns that are watching and students who are studying these teachings, you want to start you a book of life. When you get your mathematics and your supreme alphabet, you want to start you one of these. A book of life. Get you a binder. Do we, we old school around here. We don't put everything on junk drives and or thumb drives and stuff. No, get you a binder and everything should be in plastics in your book of life. All of your lessons, everything should be in the book of life. In your book of life. Everything. This is all information that I've compiled over the last 20, 25 years of just building with different guards and, you know, exchanging plus degrees and you know, sharing stuff with other brothers and they give me stuff and I give them stuff. Here's another. I have several Book of Life's, by the way. I have like four binders. This is like my biggest binder. Look at all of this. This is all ever since I first began studying. I got all of my manifestations in here to all of the degrees, all of the lessons. I mean, everything is in here. Again, my universal flag on the cover. You know, the 5% of flag, you know, at the end of the day, this is how we keep our stuff neat, clean, you know, so that way when we look at it 10, 15 years from now, it's preserved. It has no stains all over it, fingerprints, you know, dirt from dirty fingers or, you know, whatever the case may be. You keep that preserved. That's for your children in the future. Your physical seeds or your spiritual seeds that you go out there and you born. That's for them. You know what I'm saying? To share that information or whatever so they can take it and do the same thing with it. Add on to it, but do the same thing. So with that being said, family, let's jump right off into the lessons. In our lessons that we get as five percenters, Master Fahd Muhammad said about our lessons, he said that these lessons are answered very near correct and all students should read and study it until he or she can recite it by heart. He wanted us to learn and to memorize the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's questions and answers. He wanted us to do that because it was a course of study that he was trying to introduce us to and put us on so that we can begin our travels or our journeys. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan says uh, in uh, the book Closing the Gap, which is a very good book too that brothers need to get, you know, uh, Minister Jabril Muhammad, you know, one of our great scholars and scientists in the Nation of Islam, Minister Farrakhan says, some of those actual facts in our lessons are not actual facts today. 
What is the population of the original nation in the wilderness of North America and all over the planet Earth? What is the population of the colored people in the wilderness of North America and all over the planet Earth? Those were facts in those days, the early 1930s, but they're not actual facts today. So how do you ascertain what is actual today from what was actual yesterday? We start with those actual facts to ground us in the time period of Master Fahd Muhammad's manifestations to his servant. From that point, our progress of growth begins. Minister Farrakhan tells us in Closing the Gap. And very interesting, he calls it Closing the Gap. Because every day, we get so farther and farther and farther away from what the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said and Master Fahd Muhammad. We've gotten so far away from them now that it's created a gap in the messenger and Allah, Allah and his messenger, and, and us. You know, and our people are in disarray due to this gap. You know, there's internal uh, strife arguments, contention between the two groups. And like I say all the time, there's, there's two groups. The father, Brother Clarence 13X, has two sets of children. He has two sets of children, or let's say it like this. He has two sets of children out there who claim him. We claim him as five percenters in the nation of Islam and brothers who today call themselves the nation of gods and earths. They claim the Father. But we need to get together and we need to come to a table. And we need some sort of dawah. You know, we need a, a, a sit down amongst us. Because like I always tell brothers, it's because of our divide. That's the reason why the babies are in shambles today. The babies are in disarray today. You know, the gang violence in New York City and all of the cities across America. And, and it's just unprecedented today. But look how successful Father Allah was. Look how successful the Father was. He was able to eradicate all of that and start a righteous movement with youth who didn't have mother or father to, you know, teach them good morals and good home uh, uh, teaching they didn't have that so we looked at him as father and he began teaching us so likewise today brothers need to get together man to sit down and build I mean I always say that I don't see what's the fear of sitting down with your brothers and building with us let's deal with the lessons since you have the lessons our lessons and I say our lessons because they belong to the nation of Islam we're five percenters, but we belong to the nation of Islam. I mean, there's no, no way of getting around that. <laughs> you know, I, you know the, 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 our, our lessons tells us that. You know, that the nation of Islam is the one, you know, uh, pretty much that, you know, um, is going to be the, the, the judge, if you will, in, in, in a, a given discipline you know, out to individuals. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we are all Muslim gods. We're all five percenters and we all study the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his questions and answers. After Master Fahd Muhammad gave the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad his first term examination, he sent him to still do more reading, do more reading. 104 books. How many of you brothers have read 104 books? The messenger went and read 104 books. So his studying still kept going, still kept going, all the way up until the 60s and early 70s. So now the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad can stand up and make the proclamation that Allah has made me equal in knowledge with himself. Look, look at that. Here goes your knowledge and your wisdom now, which is really one. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, or wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad represents the knowledge and the wisdom. And he gives us a clear understanding. 
So in our lessons, we see that certain things are answered very near correctly. How were they, you know, those things got in our lessons? Were they misprints or typos, misquotes? I'm not going to get into that today. That's a whole nother bill. But today we're just going to deal with some of the things in our lessons. Let's start at the student enrollment, which is our one, what we call our one to ten.